So what I have here are the four pieces of wood that I've selected for the core of my ski. I've got two pieces of pine and two pieces of poplar. I'm going to run the poplar down the center line of the ski where the bindings connect. Poplar is a hardwood, so it provides more resistance to the screws getting torn out. And then I'm going to use the pine towards the outsides of the ski to act somewhat like a filler. It's a great wood, but just not as sturdy as poplar. Um, if you want to talk about what wood species to pick, you know, there's tons of information out there. Recently, I saw a video from Matthias Wandel. Apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but he did a whole video on wood species and their uh, stiffnesses and their bending behavior. It was awesome. He talked about building bow and arrow bows in the video, and I was like, that's exactly like a ski. Now, when you're at the store picking out the wood, trying to figure out what pieces are the best for you, you definitely want to make sure that it's square and doesn't have twist and you know, I really like picking the pine out of, usually there's two categories, like a select pine and a, like a knotty pine. The knotty pine, as tempting as it might be to save a few bucks on your ski build, it's probably not optimal. I've had it happen in the past where I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna use this on this ski, I wanna save a few bucks, life goes on. And as I've been like profiling my core down, I run into a knot and the thing pops out. And now I literally have a hole through the core of my ski. That's no good. You definitely, in my opinion, do not want to have like a hole in the core of your ski. <sighs> okay, before I glue up this core block, let me show you what's going on outside. Ta-da! Freaking dumping. There's my buddy. Hey, dude, check it out, man. It's freaking snowing. Yeah, dude. Dude. It's snowing. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Want this one? Ready? Nice job, buddy. All right, I'm back. I got a whole bunch of clamps. Bought all these bad boys from Harbor Freight. Um, really can't go wrong with clamps. The more the merrier. Let's put some clamps on this bad boy. All right, we're about 36 hours after I clamp this all together. Let's pull it apart. Now I need to remove a bunch of this glue and excess squeeze out. Um, probably the best tool for this would be a joiner. I don't have one in my small garage shop here, so I'm just gonna use an electric hand plane. So what I have now is what I call a core block. That's a giant hunk of wood that I'm gonna take over to the bandsaw, rip into a bunch of slices. Um, and I take those slices and fold them essentially like maybe like a butterfly wing or a book, because it's called book matching. When you fold it like that, you get a symmetric grain structure about the center line of the ski, which for skiing purposes, makes me feel like I'm gonna get the same response and feel out of ski, no matter if I put my right foot on my left foot or if I'm taking a left turn or right turn. Um, definitely a kind of a high-end woodworking thing you don't see in too many mass-produced skis, so a nice little classy touch you can do if you build your own skis. So here I have four slices out of that block that I'm now gonna glue up into what I call core blanks. Uh, 
to do this glue up, I've got these handy dandy four way clamps. These clamps apply pressure both up and down and towards the inside, making sure that you kind of have like a flat panel as well as, you know, sealing the seam nice and tight. Making sure to have my hardwood facing up and applying glue to that face because I know I want that to be the center line of my ski. And then, yeah, I picked four slices that were next to each other in the block so I can keep the grains as uniform as possible. a pair of core blanks. Now I didn't concern myself entirely with getting it flat throughout the full length because I know I'm only going to have a certain portion at this thickness, um, the binding platform, and then I'm going to taper it down in the tip and the tail. So yeah, a couple little spots that aren't flat are no big deal. I do have a perfectly flat side on the bottom. That's important because that's what's in contact with the base of the ski and yeah the next step will be taking this over to the ski NC and cutting out the shape of the core minus the thickness of the sidewalls so let's go do that So this is what sidewall looks like when you order it. I only attach sidewall to the core, which doesn't run from the tip to the tail. It's, it's really only about five feet long in length, usually most of the cores. So I'm gonna cut about a foot off of this, and then I'm gonna cut it down into like two inch wide strips. Um, it's much easier to cut these two inch wide strips first and then cut it down to half inch wide strips, which I'll end up gluing to the core. Uh, just because this stuff, when it heats, it expands and curves and twists and gets real funky. So I, I'm going to do this whole operation on the table saw because it's got a nice stiff blade. Definitely don't do it on a bandsaw or with a jigsaw. Table saw is where it's at. Probably dedicate a blade to this process too because keeping it sharp for plastic is a wise idea. And yeah, booyah. All right, I got all the pieces ready now to glue my sidewall onto my core. Got the two strips of sidewall with the sand blasted side facing up. Got my core, got my two calls that are just like the little sections from the side of the core blank. I'm using five minute JB Weld style epoxy. And I'm definitely gonna be using some gloves because nobody wants to get epoxy on their fingers. Back here, I've got a fan blasting air out the door with a little open section of my garage door over there so I get a cross breeze. And yeah, that pretty much is it. So let's get to it. Oh, I'm gonna hit it with a flame torch, like a torch. It's called flame treatment, and that kind of opens up the pores of the plastic a little better and prepares it for better adhesion with the epoxy, softens it up a little bit. So yeah hit it with the torch, then apply the glue, throw it in the jig, clamp it up. Let's do it to it. All right, this has been drying overnight. 
I'm ready to pull them out of the clamps, chop off these ends. I'll usually use either a Japanese pull saw or like a flush cut saw and then send it through the planer and then run it through the profiling jig. <laughs> All right, we got ourselves a nice looking pair of ski cores. This set happens to be about 9.5 millimeters in the waist, uh, 4.5 millimeters in the tail, and 3.5 millimeters in the tip. I like a little stiffer tail than tip, and I'm a pretty aggressive skier, so this is a good thickness for me. If you like a little softer ski, or you want some buttery skis, or you know, for a beginner to intermediate skier, might suggest a little thinner but I know that these are gonna be for me. Thanks for watching. This will conclude the first part of the series in my ski building, you know, construction learning uh, type of series. Hope to see you next time.